Hello, how's it going you guys? I hope you had a long weekend if you're in the States here and um, you know that you got some sewing done if you got to or just relaxed. I did a lot of relaxing which is kind of rare for me. I even took Monday off which I never do so that was kind of fun. So I got my cameras working. It was kind of a crazy weird little thing and the guy was super smart. Fixed it in a jiff. So let's hope Let's hope it all stays kosher over here. <laughs> so, um, how are you guys doing? How, I know, okay, so two apologies. The red is gonna be really bright for the camera, I can already tell. And um, my pattern is very lightly printed. Look at how you can barely see it. So, um, I'm hoping you guys just, it little look like I'm just cutting in the middle of nowhere, right? So, hi Cass, good morning, how are you doing? <laughs> so um i totally am in love with that myrna dress it is it's like i keep thinking about wearing it um it fits really good i need a short version now you know so maybe we'll get to that one day i don't usually wear really long dresses hi ida how you doing <laughs> so um this is the third dress in our little sew along. It's very, very casual. So um, the sew along is at the beginning of, or the end of April, beginning of May, I kind of polled you guys and said, hey, what dresses do you guys want to make? And you guys nominated a bunch of dresses. And I whittled it down to a couple in the like missy sizing and a couple in the curvy sizing. And I just said, hey, I'll sew all of them. You can pick whatever you want. And you can even, you know sew whatever dress you want so if you're sewing a dress and you're kind of part of our little sew along i hope you guys hashtag it ssl sal on instagram so that we can see you and cheer you on and congratulate you and um help you out so hi malin how's it going malin aren't you making a um striped cali shirt dress because that is really cool yes exactly yeah awesome you're on the yoke Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna switch to this other chat thing because I can't really see the chat. It's like the smallest font ever. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch to this one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's way better. There we go. There we go. Cool. So um, I am pretty excited about this Upton dress because it's my first cashmere pattern. Um, again, I am really sorry about how faintly my pattern is printed. Um, some of the pieces are okay, but a lot of them are pretty faint. And I have already trimmed off a lot of the other sizes that I won't be cutting. I am cutting the smallest size because I'm just under the size range. Another prison dress, exactly. Hey, hey, at least we're serving time together, right? <laughs> I dropped off all my Willow um, tanks and the dress, and they were super excited. So um, I'm really excited about teaching that class. I'm realizing once I like you know got on the other side of chicken boots and tidied all that up because they kept saying you know we'd really love for you to teach classes. I was just like oh my gosh I can't even think about that, and I didn't know that's what I was feeling. It was like I couldn't even think about that at the time. Just like one more thing. Hi Olivia. <laughs> Your mom said that. That's so funny. That's what we were saying about my willow tank dress the other day, Olivia. I'm like, someone, either someone said it or I did. <laughs> it looks like a prison dress. It doesn't on, Mullen. It doesn't on, I promise. Like when you're wearing it, it does. It looks very summery. So, you know, kind of like New England summer, which I'm on the California coast. So, you know, I'm very... I'm very aware of the different beach trends coast to coast. I gotta slide my mat under me a little better. So, should we get to cutting? I put in a new blade, so um, hopefully, you know, I stick to the fabric. All right, so I'm making the Upton dress. Um, this is a pattern company called Cashmerette. Their size range is intended for curvier gals. I'm using their language not you know my personal preference i love stripes too Willen. uh there is basically two views but they have slight alterations between them so there's a really cool pleated skirt version um, a smooth skirt or what they call gourd and there is a v neck or a scoop neck version and a high back like high back neck or a v back neck so i'm going to do the v front and back 
and the gourd version, not the pleated version. Only because um, I really like smoother things. They're a little more flattering on me because I tend to be curvy myself. So there is a little waistband, which I didn't even notice at first. There is cup measurements on here. I don't think, I'm not sure you guys can see that. I have auto focus off so it doesn't do crazy stuff. So sorry, sorry, sorry guys. Um, but the bust sizing to the hip sizing is, let's see, where is it? So if it's a 40 to 56 inch bust, 42 to 58 inch hip. So it does, hello Carol, hi Eliza. So it does um, in, in, um, include extra sizes or other sizes rather than Missy, traditionally Missy sizing, so. <laughs> yeah, nice Olivia, it's fine. Nine, you're, I think, I don't know if there's anyone on Twitch. Let's see, Wait, I can check, let's see. I don't know if there's anyone on Twitch. Oh, let's, let's see. see, I gotta mute myself though. I have one viewer. Hello Twitch. So yes, I am talking to two different chats right now. I'm talking to YouTube and to Twitch. So if you're on either, please say hi. I can see your, your messages on either. And if you want to chat with us, we really love it when you say hello and chat with us and, you know, heckle me or encourage me or, you know, chime in with what you're doing. We really love to chat with everybody. And if you're on YouTube, you need to call, you need to, you need to create what's called a channel on YouTube, which is otherwise known as an account. It's just a security precaution. So, all right, let's get to it. So I'm going to do my bodices first because I could be cutting it close on the yardage. I'm not quite sure. I didn't really lay it out. I try to do this kind of blind for you guys because I know you like seeing what I'm going to do if I get into a pickle and you know what you, what you could do if you got into a pickle. So I try not to see if I'm going to get into a pickle or not because um, sometimes I do. And I just kind of, you know, you know, it's a gourd skirt. I see the grain lines on there, so it could be a little challenging. So I'm gonna start with my bodice because the bodice, I really definitely want the grain line to be spot on. The fit will work out better and, you know, it's very visual when the grain line isn't um, on grain. And then I will cut my skirts. So, and then here's my lining, which funny enough for my photo, I had the wrong side pictured. <laughs> So I actually liked how faint it was and it just gets crisper. So that's pretty cool. All right. So like I said, I'm cutting the size 12. So sorry about how faint it is. I located my bust um, and we'll, I'll follow this up with a pattern drafting post eventually. Um, I wanted to see where this dart was going to hit my apex and my bust. Hi Janice. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited too, Eliza. Um, our friend Brooke, you know, who's a moderator here occasionally, she recommended it to me because she says, you know, I love the stuff. It hardly wrinkles. Um, and she really liked the weight of it. And so I kind of sought it out. I kind of, I'm kind of secretly, not so secretly trying to um, be twins with her because she's making an Upton. I think she's using Brussels and it might be red as well. I don't think she's doing Brussels linen though. She's just doing a red. I have a hair in my eye. So I was like, oh, this will be fun. If I ever see her, we'll be twins. <laughs> so anywho, um, I do like it so far. I did iron this a tiny bit, but I did not need to, to iron it, Eliza. And it is pre-washed pretty obviously. You can see all my thread vomit there because I didn't pre-surge it. My serger is kind of in a funny, it's not in a funny spot, but if I want to just throw it through the serger, I have to stand there if I want, if I'm being lazy. So, so that's what I, and I was like, you know, I get the fabric, I get so excited, I get home, I go home and throw it in the washing machine. So it has a curved dart here at the waist. I really don't think you guys can see that. I'm gonna use my little highlighter. I was about to use a Sharpie and I thought that'll probably be a bad idea. So here's my, here's my dart. Don't really see those. And it's probably cause they're trying to pinch a little bit under the bosom there. And then there's a traditional dart right here. I did mark mine right here because like I said, I was locating my apex in relation to this one because it's a fitted bodice. I wanna do cashmere at proud. 
So I wanted to see where my apex was going to fall in and, and, um, light of where this is, and it's going to be okay. It looks like it's going to be okay. So, oh, that's awesome, Cass. Oh, cool. Light blue will be pretty. Yeah, I really like the weight of it. It feels really nice. I know it looks like hot lava on the screen. Sorry about that. Let's see, maybe I can add something to a break. Get the uh, color. <laughs> to break it up a little bit for your eyeballs. Hi, Spencer. How's it going? <laughs> Good afternoon to you, too. Welcome. I'm cutting the Upton dress by Cashmeret, my first Cashmeret pattern. And I'm pretty excited about it. I, you know, I, I obviously tend to gravitate towards traditional dress, dress styles and dress making. So, um, you know, this is kind of right along there. It kind of helps that I cut off all those extra sizes so I can see my line really easily. All right. Get rid of all this. It's funny, when I was looking at the picture for this, okay, I'm doing the V-neck, which you guys can't see because my the printing of this is so faint. Um, oh, I, I just lost what I was about to tell you guys. All right, there we go. Let's see here. I'm gonna look at all this. I'm gonna mark my dart. And then I have some pins to do it. Hi, Siobhan. How's it going? Um, you know, Ida, I think it is a um, blend. It's a great question. So it's not 100% linen. So it makes it, I think it's a linen rayon blend or linen tencel blend. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> if I'm ever sponsored by someone, I will definitely have all my details and ducks in a row. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, so it's so because it's a blend, it doesn't have quite the um, wrinkle prone behavior. All right, so I'm marking my dart. I just poke in the end like this, peel off my paper. You can tell I'm not very gentle with my pattern pieces. But I'm not saying I recommend it that way. I just, um, I just go for it. It's never really been an issue for me when I go back to sew it again. Because, you know, partly I know that if I really wanted to add the scoop neck back in there, I know that it's easy for me to say that because I have the pattern drafting background, but at the same time, I didn't always, and so I just tried to um, figure it out and based on what was in my wardrobe and what I liked, um, based on the one I'd already sewn. So you do have something to go, you're not really going blind into it if you do get rid of all those. Yeah, I think it's rayon blend as well, Eliza. I kind of briefly looked at it because I thought, oh, I might get that question. <laughs> all right, this is the front. I'm gonna set that aside. Set my pattern pieces aside. Let's do the back here. Ooh, if I wouldn't have slipped that, I probably could have gotten this in there. But as it sounds, I'm going to, um, let's see here. I really want it to be right there, but it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Let's look at the other side there because it is a little bit cut off grain. This is my face. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's not typical, but I do like fabrics to be cut on grain. It's so funny because I'm so cavalier about so much, but it just comes from working in a fabric store. All right. So um, you can't see my grain line, but I'm just going to check and see if it is on green, that's the way I do it. Right, Janice? You know, one of my favorite dresses is a red and white floral print. I never wear it. And it's it's a very similar silhouette to this. I think that's what made me think of it. So, 
Yeah, exactly, Siobhan. Yeah, it is. I think it is a nice bun. It, it feels not too much rayon and not too much linen, you know, because I feel like rayon can get a little hot and even a little stinky. I love it, but at the same time, um, you know, it has its drawbacks. There's some interesting angles on this. Usually I use two weights. I don't usually like, you know, wing. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I just totally had a heart attack that this was the front because of the V-neck and it needed to be on the full, but it doesn't. It is a cut two and then it's a fully lined bodice. Just do your best with your rotary knife when you get to these interior corners like this. Sometimes I just pull away the, the material like this and kind of finish the cut. My blade is really uh, sharp right now, so that kind of helps it. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. When I first was looking at this, I thought the um, shoulder was a lot wider on one of them, and I realized it was just her hair on, in the picture, and I was like, oh, cool. I kind of like the narrower tank. Let's see if I got all layers. All right, let's see here. There is a back waist dart and a shoulder dart. Very rare to see, especially on a tank. Let's see here. Got our, all of our layers. Flip. I put my pins in. So I just put my pins straight into where the dart ends. Pull off the paper. And I, I hold the pins pretty firmly to pull the paper through like that. And then I pull apart my bodices, which pulls the pins, and then I secure my pins. I'm really glad I switched to these pins. The quilting pins were so helpful for so long, but these are much better for the dressmaking because they stay in my fabric a little easier. The quilting pins just kind of work their way out, you know. I'll need that front bodice for that dart shape um, when I'm sewing it and I'll put it with it. But right now I'm just gonna set it aside. So let's see, I have these little waistband pieces and I am kind of considering leaving them towards the end and giving me more options for grain line placement. The grain line does go this way and the front is on the fold right here. And the back is not on the fold because it's got a center back zipper, I'm pretty sure. That's why. And I don't really feel like this is mandatory to be on the length grain. In fact, sometimes waistbands work really good when they are on the length grain going this way around your body because it is more stable. But if you need a little bit of give, then keeping this grain line parallel to the fold will give you that because the cross grain tends to be a little bit stretchy. Not stretchy like a knit or a bias, but it does have more give, you know? And I, like I said, I don't think I'm cutting it close on fabric, but I'm just gonna give myself as many options as possible for later on, you know? And I didn't want to cut my bodice off grain. I didn't want to leave that till the end. So this has one um, uh, outer fabric and then one as the lining fabric, so it's fully lined. So it's gonna be something I have to cut again. That's also why I took my bodices off my red fabric because I have to cut them again in lining, which I have set aside. Sorry if I'm going so fast, you guys. I'm not trying to. <laughs> All right, let's get to the skirt. So there's some ink. Can you see that a little better? <laughs> it's still pretty faint. 
tissue is always a little fainter. All right, so um, if I'm gonna do anything off grain, I'm gonna do my side skirts. Center, side, side, center. And what I'm thinking of doing for this is um, I can, because there's a center back seam, and I don't have a one-way print. So if you're following along with me cutting out your Upton and you have a one-way print, by one-way print I mean there's a direction on the print. So say you have um, elephants on your fabric and the elephants are only upright going one direction, that is a one-way print. If it's an all-over print, the elephants are kind of tossed all over in every direction. Some are upside down, some are sideways, some are right side up, and you can cut your fabric any direction. But it's really good to check because sometimes it's not so obvious, and that Myrna that I just sewed is a good example of that. I did have to flip my skirts because there were eight skirts. And it didn't end up making a difference at all. It was really hard to tell if it was one way or not. And I think we did all decided that we really couldn't tell and it wouldn't be a big deal since it's such a small all over print that um, if it was one way, we weren't going, it would get kind of lost in the birds, you know? And, and I, I really can't tell. I actually now think that maybe it's a two way print rather than one way. So if you are cutting a one way print, Make sure you did have enough fabric and you aren't flipping your pieces like I am right now. This piece right here is on the fold. I'm gonna go with the original skirt or dress length. I'm not gonna lengthen or shorten. Oh, and at the end today, oh, don't let me forget, I'm gonna do a little tiny um, tutorial on Trello. I am not an expert on Trello at all. I learned, uh, how to use it watching um, Mim is making on Twitch. I had heard of it. I had seen snippets of it, but I didn't really understand like how it could work for me or what I would get out of it. And I didn't want one more thing to pull me onto my phone and onto my computer technology wise, you know? Um, but do you think I'm always trying to get off of it? And I think that's just from having a business for so long. <laughs> that, uh, I didn't want one more thing to look at. But um, I did have a, a person comment that they're trying to figure out how to use it the way I did. And the way I'm using Trello is very, very basic. And that is I'm keeping a record of every pattern I have to cut and sew here, like all of my home sew patterns. I'm just keeping an image of the pattern cover and the pattern back, the, the envelope. So that when I'm at the fabric store and I'm like, ooh, this fabric would make a really great tamarack jacket, I can just pull up the tamarack jacket, um, zoom in on the yardage, and then I don't have to, because sometimes maybe the fabric store has that pattern or maybe they don't. Sometimes the internet is really terrible in some of those fabric stores. And so um, this is a really easy way to have it available. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the internet's good enough for me to connect to my Trello. So far it's been awesome. So I'm just gonna show how to do that because she was having trouble figuring out how to add the attachment. I'm gonna do it from my phone and I'll do it from the desktop. But trust me, like you guys, that Trello is probably a really big world of things you could do with it. I'm doing it really in a basic way, but it has been really handy so far to have that. Because my my local fabric store sometimes does carry the pattern, but it's out of stock, you know, or it's in another part of the store. All right, I haven't trimmed off all the extra sizes on this one, but I'm making the smallest. No, that's my front, but I'll still notch it. This, this uh, dress ha does have pockets as well, but they won't be on the, the markings won't be on this piece. So, all right, there's my front. I'm usually very methodical about how I stack up my pattern pieces. 
and I do them usually in the order of how I think I'm going to sew them. And if I'm not sure how I'm going to sew them, I always do them in the order of how it wraps around the body. So I start with the center front, I go to the side, the side back, and to the back. And so like this is a good example of, um, I'll just do it front and back, and then front, then side, front, side back, and then center back. On that um, Myrna eight skirts i actually laid them out but then i got a little methodical about that as well and i was like all right you know all i need to do is just pick up the right one to stick to the edges that were facing each other and that worked really good so this one i'm going to go by the green line i actually can fit it right here and i might do that but um actually. Hmm. What do I like? What do I like? So this is this is really about where my skirt is at. That. I'm just gonna line this up here because I really love seeing the selvage parallel to my center back there. And this may end up helping me with one of my side skirt placements. So I'm just gonna leave that. Actually, I'm kind of tempted to see my side skirt here. I'm tempted. Yeah, exactly, Malin. Malin, you were there for that stream. I remember that, right? We both were learning that. And you were helping me understand, like, wow, how can I use this? <laughs> this is my side front. I'm switching to the side front right now. I'm just kind of seeing. It actually fits in this spot so nicely. And as long as um, I have enough down there for my skirt, I'm good. So I'm going to look at my grain line here, make sure it's parallel to the selvage. I kind of love it when patterns do this. I shouldn't design a pattern to do this, but it is really helpful. I'm going to pivot this to be a little closer and then check it again. That's eight. That's eight. All right. I don't want it too tight. The tissue paper too tight. I'm gonna slide that up a little bit. And Trello is free, by the way. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. But the Excel document could be helpful. It just depends on how you shop. You know, if you're only at home shopping online, then that could be handy. But I do do go to fabric stores and visit them. And sometimes um, I will get messages, <laughs> ask people asking me, do you know the yardage for this? And yeah, yeah, I know I don't have to answer those messages, but if I know it, I'll help them out. Um, or maybe I'm curious, or maybe I'm at home online shopping and I don't have my uh, patterns here with me at home, you know? But it has been really nice. I really like it. And, and like I said, like you can, you can add all kinds of details in it. You can um, put in pictures. You can put a lot of pictures in. You can, you can put pictures in of when you made it. Uh, you can put notes in there. You can say, this is for this fabric that I bought. You know, you have a lot of options in there. And I just really like using it that I can see my pattern card. I don't just want my size sometimes either. Okay, I'm gonna leave the paper on this one. Side fronts and side backs sometimes can be confusing. Put it under my front. I set this aside for my waistband. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was kind of excited. I still I had just got that willow tank, so I can put that one in for you guys. 
plenty of fabric, plenty of fabric. All right, we have our back. It's so faint, I can barely see it. So what are you guys working on? Tell me what you guys are doing. Let's see here. This is my, I'm just folding that back because of the size thing so I can kind of see better. I know it's the middle of the week so I really appreciate you guys joining me too. I know some of you are working and sneaking. <laughs> Waiting for the weekend. We'll definitely start sewing this um, tomorrow, Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific and um, finish it on Saturday. Then I'm going out of town this weekend with my daughter. It'll be fun. We're going to Santa Cruz. So that'll be fun. And then I'll be back next week. And we're going to be making the tea house dress, which I'm wearing, by the way. This is my first tea house dress. I really love it. It's very, very comfortable. And I'm going to be making it out of this amazing plaid. What does that say? Five and a quarter. Five. And a quarter, there we go, about there. Sometimes it just doesn't look parallel, does it? But I am gonna do something kinda cool with that tea house dress. I decided that, um, I think it's a linen might be a linen tencel blend. I have the little thing that tells me. But when I washed it, you guys, it got so wrinkly, but kind of in a cool seersuckery way. And so this is what I decided to do. I still ironed it because I'm going to iron it out flat, but I figured out the percentage that it shrinks up when it's all wrinkly like that. And so this is my plan, is that I'm going to make it a little bit bigger in the percentage length and width wise that it shrinks up. And I'm not gonna iron it when I wear it. I'm just gonna wear it all scrunched up. You know what I mean? So you can learn by me to see if this works. I'm also going to scoop out the center back a little bit so I can leave off the belt because I really like wearing it without the belt. I do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Malin. I need, I need to do the links to the hashtags and the pattern pages because I couldn't get that to work. But I think that that's a really amazing thing about Trello is that you could actually link directly from your, your little card that you make on the pattern envelope, just a little link to the hashtag. And then that way you can be standing in the store going, hmm, do I wanna make this? Is this fabric gonna be okay? You know, Has anyone made it in a similar print that's this large or a plaid, a stripe? Did they, you know? So I need to work on that. <laughs> What's that? I can't see like the corner of the, um, <laughs> can you wash first and use the wrinkled fabric to make your job? Um, I did wash it. Here's the deal, Shadon, is if I cut out the fabric while it's all wrinkly, I run the risk of it not being very accurate because it doesn't wrinkle perfectly proportional all the, all the, all around on the fabric. So I did wash first and that's when I learned how, what it does when it wrinkles up and it's kind of cool. It kind of, um, cause it's, cause it's a plaid, I'll show it to you. Um, it kind of takes the, st the stiffness out of a plaid, you know, cause I'm doing it in this flowy dress. I kind of thought it might, might work. And what I did was I figured out that it's, you know, it's shrinking up about 10% in the width and like 8% in the length or something like that. And so I'll add that <laughs> to my sizing. Now, see, I used to do this for a living, you guys. I used to add shrinkage to patterns. So I could just take my size and add the shrinkage to all the, pe the pieces. But um, that might be a little bit more work than I really need to do for this dress. Since I've made it a few times, I kind of know how it fits. And so what I do run the risk is being like, you know, I don't like this all wrinkly when I'm wearing it and then ironing it and it'll just be a little big. So I just need to kind of weigh the pros and cons. Really, it's just through here that I'm most concerned. I really want it to fit in the upper body. It can get a little longer or shorter, you know? I have some wiggle room there. 
And I just feel like it'd be kind of a fun experiment. You know how, how I like my experiments. <laughs> so, and I, and I actually think doing shrinkage stuff is pretty cool. I don't know why I keep one. I keep going to this grain line. It's just an optical illusion. I think that it's not on grain. Does it look like that to you guys too? Oh, you can't even see it. I have this zoomed in so you can see the uh, pattern paper, but I can, would you like me to zoom it out? Let's see. What do you think? Do you like that better? You can see the whole piece. I can't wait for my cutting mat that fits this table to arrive. Pretty excited about it. Because usually I use my big table over there. That's an entire cutting mat. But um, for the camera, I can't really use it. I don't like that that's not a right angle right there. It kind of bugs me. You know how I feel about right angles and seams. Sorry, I'm blocking the camera probably. I always recommend changing your blade often, you guys, when you're using a rotary knife. It's more accurate, it's nicer to your hands. I know they're expensive, but it's just not worth hurting yourself for a dull blade. Um, this is marked, I know what size is, which is nice, because that's a lot of little notches. Okay, here's my center back. I'm going to set that there because I'm going to do my side back and then I can stack it up with my front and my side front. Look at all that fabric. I didn't have nothing to worry about. All I have is my pockets and my waistband. Um, <clears throat> well, Janice, it depends on what pattern piece it is. Do you have a specific pattern you're working on or a pattern piece that you're concerned about? So what I find is, um, for the most part, the length grain is the least amount of stretch. See that? There's just none. It's, it's, it's very rigid, very fixed. But if I kind of take about the same amount of fabric and go the cross grain, you can see there's a little bit of give. So, and this is just a little two inch bit. So if it was a bigger piece of fabric, you can see that that little tiny bit adds up a lot. So on a waistband, that's a very long piece. Traditionally, waistbands are not, don't have seams in them. Like on, like on pants, on a dress, it's, yeah, you would, you would put seams in it probably. You don't have to. And you've seen me sew my ginger jeans, what, like three times now? And so what I like to do is cut my waistband, length grain, both layers denim. And that's because I don't personally like my waistband stretching out. But other people like that give, that the, um, the waistband relaxing, you know? So I like mine very rigid. And I also like the thickness of the denim on both sides. It just feels, it just feels better to me. It's just a personal thing. And traditionally, like uh, waistbands were cut on the length grain for pants and trousers and, and things like that. Jeans, I'm not sure. I, you know, not sure what they traditionally were. I, I did work at a place where we did denim manufacturing, but we actually, even though we had a factory and we did all of the knits and wovens, we subcontracted out some of our denim. And I didn't do all of those patterns. I did actually. What am I talking about? I just don't remember the length grain on that. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, partly it was because it was children's wear. So it wasn't as important. So the other thing about grain line is um, torque, right? Because sometimes the grain line on a piece is really important because you could get some diagonal wrinkles on it if it's very fitted. 
You could get some um, trickiness with sewing it together if you don't have the grain lines lining up very well. Uh, shrinkage is a big deal. If you're not going to pre-wash your fabric, which you absolutely should be pre-washing your fabric if you plan on washing it in the washing machine. If you're going to plan on washing it and, wash and drying your garment that you make, you have to pre-wash the fabric. Building in the shrinkage is just, it's just not worth the time and effort to do that, you know? Um, and that's another thing. There's far more shrinkage in the length than the width, except in some knits where the opposite happens. You'll get 20% shrinkage in the length, which is an incredible amount, and it'll grow in the width, especially like lycras, cotton lycras. That's why also sometimes you buy something and you're like, there's no way these are gonna fit. They're way too long. Like in a budget style company, they may not pre-wash or pre-dye the fabric to take up that shrinkage. So they send it to you, not pre-shrunk, and they've built in the shrinkage and they expect you to do it at home, but they don't tell you that. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen those leggings where you're like, why are these a foot too long? You know? Because <laughs> like, like cotton lycra for some reason in some companies, it just shrinks a lot. <laughs> All right, let me finish this up. All right, here's my green one here. But you can, you know, help, you can manipulate the fit of a garment using your grain lines, but not by much. It just, it just is one of those things that little bits add up. If you're talking bias, then yeah, you know, there's true bias and then there's not true bias. Anything off, anything um, other than a 45 degree angle is not true bias until you get to the length of the cross grain. Then it's length of cross grain. I don't know if that answers your question, Janice. Like say on a collar, I know we've talked about it with collars. Collars traditionally, um, especially on like something like a um, button up shirt, like a men's button up shirt or a women's Oxford or, um, or a men's Oxford, uh, the archer button up, anything with a collar stand and the collar, those uh, typically what you will see, you see a variety of things. Traditionally, the length grain would be going along the collar wrapping around. And sometimes you will see that the top is like that and then the under collar is, has a seam and it's cut in two pieces and they have it on the bias or on a different grain line. And it's just strategies to make your collar look really nice, lay really nice, not do anything funny. So it's just lots of little tricks and preferences. If you, shirt making is its own science of sewing and people do some really amazing things around it. I don't do all those things, I could, but I don't study that. <laughs> and so I'm kind of out of practice on all my shirt making things. Maybe we should do some experiments. Alrighty. If you do your um, notches like I do with your rotary knife, just be careful. What I like to do is I lift up the fabric a little bit and pull it up against the blade just so I get a little bit um, cut and not too deep. Oh, I will note that um, on this pattern, there was a little bit of a little errata included and it's a little tiny slip of paper. And just so you know that the whole pattern I think is half inch seams but the skirt has five eighths inch seams except at the center back seam, which is half inch like the rest of the pattern. So it's good to note if you are making this. Okay, here's my back. Here's my side back. So here I have my center front, side front, side back, center back. Let's do our waist seam. I mean, our waistbands and um, pockets. And our lining. Almost done. All right, so um, maybe I'll use the recommended grain line for my waistband since I have plenty of fabric. I may not even need 
these scraps here. We'll just save them for something else later. Look at all this fabric. What was I worried about? I really want to cut it on those scraps. <laughs> this is cut two, this is cut one on the fold. These little pieces, when they're this little, I really hate cutting them on the fold. I just wish it was a full pattern piece. It's so hard to be perfectly accurate on such a small piece. So what I do is I feel for the ridge of the fold on this um, line right here. I feel for the ridge and make sure that it's all on underneath that line right there. Plus this is like in the middle of the fabric. Like I really could use a little bit less fabric by um, cutting this apart and just biasing it that way. Like canting the pattern pieces toward that way. But I, I am okay in this. If I had this little bit of fabric, it's not gonna make the difference or anything. So I'll just leave it right here on the original fold. I did wash the fabric, so this is a, I just folded it down the middle. Oh, I meant to show you guys how I like to stack my fabric. So when you have, especially when you have a lot of yards, it's a little harder to do with a lot of yards, but it's, it's, it makes using it a lot um, easier. So say, um, cause I know a lot of you are probably cutting things out on the floor or on your dining room table and having all this fabric, it just kind of gets crazy. And so what I like to do is I like to accordion fold my fabric like this. So like this. I don't do it that, you can do it this narrow, it actually is really nice. So then, so basically what I'm doing is just like go back and forth like this. I'm making this look really easy right now because I have a really small piece. So if you have a big piece, what I do is pretend like this is like a yard. I go like this, I go back and forth along the top fold, shake it out a little bit and go back like this. And I'll show you why this is so nice. So when you have this like accordion folded piece, when you're pulling your fabric like this, it just draws off the top. I know this is really light. That way, um, like you can set that little thing on like maybe two chairs next to each other, set it on the seat of the chairs and then pull it up onto your table and it'll just kind of, you know, kind of uh, self feed. Because if you're doing it when it's all folded on the other way, you're, you're gonna see they're rearranging it and fighting with it, you know? So that's just my little tip. I forget to show you that's what I do over here every time we're cutting something. Sorry. It's those weird little things I don't even know I do anymore. So it'd be so tempting to do this, right? But that's not on grain. I can see the grain of the Brussels linen. So I'm just gonna fit it in here. This one's not on the fold. I just need to cut two. I know a lot of people really want that cut to be perfectly accurate on the line. Using a ruler is, is kind of dangerous for using your rotary knife. Um, it helps if you're slow, slow cutting and stuff. But I just recommend trusting that you're gonna cut it pretty straight just by going for it. And you know, if you get off a little bit, it's okay. You have your seam allowance that's gonna help you compensate. So, you know, if you see a little nip out of your edge there when you get to sewing it, straighten it out as you sew, you know, just ignore it. <laughs> just go straight, you know. All right, let me put all these notches in here. Oh, I did this one, didn't I? 
I did this one. I didn't even think about it. Okay, so I need to do um, my, I didn't do this one. I need to do my lining and my pockets. Pockets is. I was really surprised when I looked at the Colette Myrna hashtag um, how few people had made it. It's kind of like the Amelia dress. I really love that dress. All right, so um, I need four pockets. Let's get rid of some of this excess tissue here. I'm gonna fold from the selvage side. The reason I do that, it's really tempted to, to fold from this side and put your two layers, but that's the fold of the fabric and the, basically the center of the fabric. So when you opened it up, you'd have your pockets cut out of the middle of this piece of fabric. I might be able to use this fabric for something else. I'm pretty good about um, utilizing these kinds of chunks for something. What the heck is going on here? Oh, the side seems at an angle. All right. Now, do I think the pockets really need to be cut on grain? If I were low on fabric, you can bet I would cut it off grain before I would uh, not cut a pocket. <laughs> right? This is the um, grain line. Let me show you. Here's the pocket. See that? Can you see that? That's the grain line though. Yeah, I learned that fabric folding trip trick from someone else, Janice, a long time ago. And I think I was working in a, a factory. Um and it was someone doing a sample cut for me. And when I went out there, I saw her folding and I was like, why are you folding it that way? I, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> At first, people are always like, oh, here comes this kid again. After a while, they, they, really, they really appreciated that I wanted to understand, you know. I learned a lot. Okay, there we go. I don't need that. <laughs> it's like a teardrop pocket. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's do our lining. Even though I'm on camera, I still try and keep all my stuff together and nice and tidy just because, um, yeah, I, that's just how I am. I'm not a neat freak. I just don't like losing things. I don't like accidentally thinking I'm going to throw something away. Oh, the lighting is just, it's just terrible. I hope my new mat helps that. It's a little bright. You want me to tone down the brightness for you guys? What do you guys think? Probably doesn't bug you as much as it bugs me. All right, so here is my back. This is a one-way print because the bicycles are right side up, only going one direction. Let's see, can I fit these together here? Yeah. Maybe. You know, I didn't even check. That pocket could have been lining fabric. Let's look, just so if you're cutting it at home. It just says cut four. So you could, you could use lining fabric. Just be aware that um, when you go to sew in your side seam pocket, that you run the risk of being able to see a little bit at the side seam. And if you, you know, you might like that effect, so that's okay. Um, if you're really skint on fabric and you just need to use the lining, if you have a little spare piece of your uh, main fabric, you could just add it to the bottom pocket on each side right here at the beginning. 
So just cut a piece of the regular, the main fabric out, the outer fabric, top stitch it on here, you know, clean finish it right there. And then just treat the pocket as is. And then that way, when, um, you know, when you're putting your hand in your pocket and you're pulling it away, you're gonna see the under pocket, you're gonna see the main fabric showing. I have a pocket video. Didn't we cover that part, you guys? That you can sew it that way. It's so weird when it's not a, um, like this is the right front and that's the, that's the left back. So confusing to me. Let's see. Might be able to do it right there. And no, I'm not gonna match my bicycles <laughs> as a stripe or anything like that. <laughs> I am just not, sorry guys, not going to, uh, I don't go down that road. Not on the lining, I'm not worried about it. I had a lot of trouble picking out the fabric for this dress but then I decided I, I wanted the Brussels linen. That helped me make my decision. And I was like, at the last second, I was like, oh, I need lining. And then just this just came up as a, uh, like in the recommended for you at the bottom underneath. I was like, oh, perfect. That's what I'm gonna get. I didn't think too hard about it. You still need your darts even on the lining. That's why it is important to kind of be as accurate as you can when you sew them because you're going to be sewing the lining to them as well. That's so funny, I was just trying to pull it off of the paper. All right, so this, uh, I, I, I really need my markings on the wrong side of the fabric. I don't know on the red which is the right and which is the wrong side quite yet. So I'm gonna transfer all these and I just take one by one. I take this pin from this one and now I put it here. I'm gonna need it like this when I go to sew it anyway, so why not do it now, you know? It makes it so much more pleasant when I get to the sewing machine and it's ready to go. Now my darts are all marked on the bodice. <laughs> Be kind of cute. Um, I'm actually not gonna pair them with the bodice, the like the front to the front. Cause that's not how I'll sew it. I'll end up sewing it um, front to back and front to back and then joining them. I hope one of you makes the pleated version. I love pleats. Ah, that fits even better. I mean, would I be this anal about the grain line if you weren't watching me? No. I'm just being honest. If you were doing a stripe, the grain line's pretty important. Oops, I just trimmed off that little bit right there. I've, all, I've told you guys my story about my first plaid garment in high school, right? <laughs> It was one of the requirements to like get to the next level was to do like a stripe or to do a garment where you're matching stripes and plaids. And um, I really did think I had cut it out matching the plaids and it was a little crop top. It was like white and plaid, like I did color blocking. It was the 80s, you know. And um, I remember just chatting with my friends and happily being done and hemming it up and the hemming and hemming and hemming. And I finally was like, I feel like I've been hemming like for forever. And I realized it was because 
I had matched my plaids on the side, but I had matched them one whole row off from each other, you know? So basically I had, oh, that's what I was doing. I was just cutting, I was cutting my hem, making it a little bit straighter. And I was just going around and around like a corkscrew on this crop top. Boy, that top got short. And when the teacher, the teacher didn't even notice, or she just was kind of just so exasperated with me that she was just like, yeah, yeah, okay, you did, you matched. Like all she looked for was that the plaids were matched on the side, and they were. But the thing is, that's what can happen if you don't match the same one, because basically I cut it off like this, and I didn't notice, so yeah. Not my proudest make. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna transfer this back right now before I do the other one. I'll just do both actually, just like this. All right. So are you guys liking having these uh, cutting videos then? Uh, no, the lining is just 100% cotton. I know that people are, uh, they're, they're saying they really like having these cutting videos beforehand. Um, and I've been, you know, I see there being views and comments, but I just wanna make sure, cause if there's anything else you guys, Exactly, Malen. That is my point with mistakes. You've got to make mistakes so that you don't ever don't do it again, right? Okay, so here is my line. This this looks like this is looking vaguely pajama esque. I don't know if this is this is not typically. I, I mean, bike fabrics totally me, but this isn't typically me for a dress. So I'm kind of I'm excited about that part. It'll be fun. All right, we just have the waistbands. Now I'm gonna keep the front with my pile. Um, I'm gonna put the rest of it away. I'm putting them on a table with a pattern weight on them so they don't fly. You like the cutting videos, Shadon? Well, I, exactly, because especially since you're not um, you're not in the sewing world, I'll bet the cutting is probably really interesting because it's it's. And uh, if you ask a lot of sewists, Sharon, what their least favorite part is, most of them will say the cutting. And I, I was totally the same way for a really long time. And then it just flipped. Now I really like the cutting part because in my head, I'm already mentally sewing it together. You get familiar with the pattern pieces and it's a creative process. And I don't think I ever thought about it being a creative process until like I said, I think just working for that fabric store in my 20s and that was just a great environment. She was, she just had such amazing fabrics and, and such a specific perspective. It's not a, I didn't adopt her perspective in sewing 100%, but it was so nice to be around a sewist that had a perspective and had passion about certain things. Like she was very passionate about natural fibers, very passionate about traditional techniques and finishing things just perfectly. Um, and that was, uh, he made a huge impression on me and it made me really want to just delve in and jump in, you know? And it was then that it, I feel like because she was just like, even though she was very, very, very strict about her own finishing and she definitely was a little snobby about my own or other people's. And I had come to her as a pretty good sewist. I'd already graduated fashion college. I'd already worked in the garment industry. Like, she, you know, I had pattern, pattern drafting experience at the wazoo. She um, was still extremely interested in like put whatever print you want together. And she knew Oil Lily, which is one of my favorite brands at the time. So that was pretty cool, you know? And so I feel like then the cutting side flipped for me and it became a very creative process. So, um, and then it became more enjoyable. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It makes you want to cut stuff out, right? Right, 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 exactly, Olivia. I know, it's like when I'm watching a gamer play a game I'm really terrible at, I just want to go and play it and be good. <laughs> Even though I'll still be terrible, you know? Hi, Nancy. Oh, good, I'm glad. 
you get very nervous when you're cutting. I know it feels very, it feels very permanent and it, and it is, you know, I understand that. Okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, me too, Sharon. I love 2D to 3D. I think that's what I love about pattern drafting, you know, in general. Um, yeah, I mean, I so the cutting, it feels like, I feel like it's a really big hurdle for sewists because they feel like they're worried that they're going to fail from the beginning, like at the beginning of their project. They're like, okay, this is where it's all riding is the cutting. And if I cut it wrong, it's, it's over. And I feel like because I've made so many mistakes, it's, it helps once you've made so many mistakes, you start learning how to get out of a pickle, right? And you can sometimes turn it into a really great thing. I mean, it's so cliche, but it's so true. You can turn it into a um, happy accident, you know, rather than an unfortunate one. <laughs> Why do I have so much of this? Oh, I probably, I could only probably buy a yard. Um, and I think that that's really important is that like, you're gonna see, you guys are gonna see me make cutting mistakes, you know? You will, it's not going to happen as often as sewing mistakes because, um, I just, I just, I don't know. I just kind of don't make as many cutting mistakes. It's usually out of negligence when I make them now, rather than anything else, you know, like the, as a trained pattern drafter, all this, all these markings on here are my language, you know, so, but I will definitely make mistakes and you'll see how I have to get out of them sometimes. And I'm not, and I think knowing where to, um, where to change the grain line, um, like Janice was asking about, is really important. You know, there are certain things, you know, if it's a directional print, no. But you guys saw me do the Cali shirt dress. You know, you, should, you guys saw me do this, a 100% off grain. That's the cross grain, right? So you know it's possible, and then I, I think I did these on the length rain, didn't I? But I wanted them solid purple. So if, even if they hadn't been, I would have made it that way because I, I wanted the solid purple. So uh, that whole dress is off grain. So I think it's good to know that it's not the end of the world if that happens. You can't cut a whole garment on the bias without repercussions. It doesn't mean it's wrong. You just have to compensate for what that's going to be if it just wasn't set up for that, you know? Yes, exactly, Malin. Yeah, exactly. That's a, I, I tell you guys, when people say, what's your favorite tool? I say my table. It's my number one thing I say to sewists, get off of the floor uh, because it hurts you. You make you dread the process because you're like, okay, now I have to be slumped on the floor. My back and knees are going to kill me. And um, you tend to make more mistakes. I've been there. And you guys at home, I rarely sew at home. It'll be just like a spontaneous thing with my daughter or something and she'll pull out her machine. Like I saw her machine out the other day. Um, then um, I will be cutting on the floor at home. Like I, it, I would probably be like, can we just go to my office? It's a mile away. <laughs> I'd probably be very whiny about it. <laughs> so, but I do have a small rotary mat and a, and a rotary cutter there. It's pretty small though. In fact, actually, I think I brought it here. Oh, yeah, it's the one next to the sewing machine. <laughs> It'll be fine, Janice, especially a skirt. I think the the only, like, maybe you'll see it get a little lower on one side, but you probably won't notice, especially because so many pattern drafters um, out there are not drafting the back skirt properly to accommodate a booty. You know, so uh, you already see that a little bit, you know, so you probably won't even have any issue with it at all, you know. All right, so sometimes, you know, you can use your fabric as the pattern piece. It's nice as it sticks on there, but my problem with this is if you use both, you run the risk of cutting one and not the other, and you don't want to cut either. So just use your pattern piece. It's here. I glued this felt on here. You guys, I finally remembered why. I think it's because um, it was starting to leave rust on the fabric. What was that? What was that? Did I go over a pin? <gasps> oh my God, I may have. Wow. See, this is the thing, I never use pins and um, 
I forget they're there. And that this is this is okay. So part of my um, here are my self profess. Look at that, I ruined it. Um, here's my self professed thing things I do wrong. Two things. One is as a sewer, I pull, I pull, <laughs> I pull things a little bit, and I don't know why that is, and I'm breaking myself of that. And as a knitter and as a sewer, when I'm done with something, I let it go. Like I literally just let it go. I, you see me throw stuff on the floor, that's different. But like as a knitter, I'll be knitting along. I'll use my cable needle and then I'm done with it and I just let it go. Like I don't know where I think it's going. I don't I think I feel like it's, I think it's floating back to a little spot next to me, but it's not. It's landing between my legs and then ending up underneath me. And then I have a cat on my lap and we have to all get up and like look, you know, look for my cable needle. That's what I do with my pens. I just let go. So um, those are my two things I always do mindlessly. <laughs> you're big mat, your floor table. That's great. <laughs> you need a command for that? Oh, which command? No way. I'm not cutting a needle. I'm not cutting a pin on here ever again. That is, that is really rare for me to do. It's why I don't use a magnetic pin cushion, and I talk. I hardly talk about it because I know everybody likes them, but I'm so against magnetic pin cushions because you will accidentally, eventually cut a pin with your scissors because they'll magnetize to their, your scissors. All right, I'm gonna put those there. I probably don't really need the notches on the lining, but you know, I think I put them on there. If I need them, I have my pattern pieces with me. Look at this nice big piece. I might make my husband a pair of jeans this fall and I'll use this as the pockets on the inside this time. <laughs> oh, you guys, I have to show you this fabric I got. Nancy, wait till you see this fabric I got. I'm gonna save this little piece too. I like bike fabrics a lot. I should have brought it over here. Wait, did I bring it over here? Yeah, let me get it. All right, first of all, this is my tea house fabric right here, okay? This is my tea house fabric, and it's ironed um, and nice and smooth. And I was even thinking about doing something fun with the fray edge, maybe on the sleeve hem or on the pocket, I don't know. Maybe even just like right here, but that's at an angle, so probably not. So um, yeah, you should, <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, right, Carol? Yes, exactly, cutting over a bit. No, I don't wanna come out for that. <laughs> Okay, here's my fabric. Hold on, just got. Do you see it? And look, that's all stitching on there. I could eat this. This is like, this is me, this fabric. Yes. I already planned what I'm gonna make out of it, but now I just want like four things out of it, you know? But it's pretty delicious, right? I may, maybe I need to turn the, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that willow tank dress. I really like the way that fit, shockingly. I, I really like the way that fit. This is um, two layers of cotton. I feel like it would be a really nice summer thing. And maybe I could use this as the hem. I don't know, there's definitely, it's where they started and stopped their sewing, so it's not as secure, but isn't it nice? Yes, it's so hard to find yarn dyed plaid. So true, Malin. I got this from Blackbird Fabrics. It came in a couple different fabrics. Which one of you wanted, which one of you had this in your cart as well? Some of, one of you did, and so just know that it does wrinkle a lot, so it wrinkles in a very consistent, very scrunchy way, almost like seersucker, and that's why I'm gonna use it scrunch. I don't have a piece of it unironed. Yeah, that fabric is stitched. It was a little pricey, but I think um, it's one of those things where you see it and you're like, I have to have, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I went back to the store to get it because I didn't want it to be gone. 
oh my gosh, wouldn't this be great as pants? I mean, not really. <laughs> like it wouldn't be very practical. You could, but it they'd be they'd get a little stretched out in the in the knees and in the butt, you know. What the uh, yeah, your Morgan jeans look so awesome, Nancy. I definitely want a, pr a like a print canvas or denim pair of pants. Maybe I'll find some at the fabric store this weekend because I get to go to one in person. Very excited. So, so this is next week's project. The Sew House 7 uh, Tea House dress. I'm wearing it right now. It's gonna look really different in this plaid. This one looks more like scrubs, but it has this little waist tie here and I'm gonna leave it off because my other two that I've made, I have two, right? Um, the other two that I made, I've been leaving off with the without the band, and I just really love how comfortable it is. But this one, my band is fixed on here. Will the longs be the long way or crossways? The stitches on that fabric, they are go the length grain. Lines, yeah, lines, lines, lines. Um, yeah, yeah, they are on the length grain of the fabric. So it runs this way. But if I do that willow tank dress, I could turn the skirt part on the cross grain. You can better believe I'm gonna use every inch of this fabric. So if if I got too much for that pattern, it's a little narrower too, this one. I got this from my local fabric store at Honey Run Quilters. And I bought it. So. Okay, let's look at Trello really quick. Okay, so this is for, um, What's her name? I think it's, ooh, I wanna say Beverly, I'm so bad. Yeah, Beverly, ha, I got it. <laughs> okay, so um, here we go. Here is, I'm gonna do this on my phone first because um, if you can do it on your phone, it's easier and quicker. So here's the Trello app. So I already have some boards, but if you need to create one, you're gonna say, you, you, so what they, I don't understand the board, the list, the card thing, that's what they call it, so just, let it go and go with it. So you're gonna start a new board, you can name it whatever you want. Let's say I wanna do a women's wear board, right? So I say create, and then you need to add a list inside that board. You can do many lists if you want. You could do women's wear and then do dresses, tops, jeans, pants, whatever you want, right? So I'm gonna take you through all the steps as if you were creating this from scratch. Okay, so now we have dresses. Now you need to add cards, and your cards are your pattern envelopes, right? So here we go. We're gonna say the um, willow tank, okay? And then that added it right there, and so I'm gonna click this willow tank, and then go down here. So you can add all kinds of things here. You're gonna add attachment, you're gonna either take a photo right then or choose a photo, choose from photos. And so I'm going to do the back first and then I'm gonna do the um, front. And I'll tell you why. That is so that when I look at my, is it uploading? When I look at this, the front is showing. So you can add it, the front and then the back of the envelope, but you're gonna probably have to rearrange it and that's totally easy to do. You can just go to this, go to your attachments here, click these three dots and say, I would like this, or actually like, let's go to this one. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Say we want this to be the cover image. Then you click the um, three dots. Let's let it download for a second. So you go to the three dots up here and then you say make cover image. So if you do them out of order, you, it's easy to do. And so now that's my cover image. So if I did it the reverse order, that's right. Okay, so I already have all these boards here. And so I'm gonna put my willow tank in my um, tops. And so look at all these, these are all my pattern cards. So, you know, I can go to this linden sweatshirt 
and then I can just click it, swipe. Oh, do I not have the back? <laughs> this is the one I don't have the back for. Okay, let's look at this one. What? Okay, wait, maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Do I not have the, um... it says I have two. Oh, here we go. Image attachments. There we go. And then swipe. And then I see my pattern card. I touch it. Night, Ida. And then I can zoom in and see my yardage. Okay. So that's how you do it. So if you already have a board, so you go to your tops, you say add card, which is right here at the bottom. Add card. Willow Tank by Greenline Studio. I do this so that it um, cements it in my brain who it's by. Okay, I add it. I click it again. That's the trick because it just, it just starts adding them. This is where I add my pictures. So choose from photos. All photos. I'm going to do my back first. And my front. And now I'm done. X. And there it is. So I don't know if you can see it very good, but there we go. <laughs> so that is how I do that um, on my phone. And I'll show you really quick on my computer as well. So that's the app Trello. I don't know much about it. Everything I learned was watching Mim is making on Twitch TV and she knows it really well. I'm just doing it for pattern cards and I, um, this gal asked me how I do that. Ooh, is it not gonna show my computer screen? Oh, there we go. So let's see here. <clears throat> All right, so here is my same boards. Let's refresh it and let's see, I already added that. So create new board and then it shows like you can say what title you want. You can change the background right here. You add a list. Um, and now under this list you add a card. I added it and then I click it again and then I um, this is where you're going to add attachment right here and then you pick your picture wherever you want I will say like if you use a PDF like say you guys are using um, printed uh, I mean a PDF printed patterns you are going to um, want to save it as a um, PDF. I mean a JPEG. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing too many things at once. Here we go. So um, if you are wanting to add all of your PDF print PDF patterns on there, save it as a like print your cover and print your thing, you know, as a like a PDF and then save it as a JPEG somehow like get it you can do the PDF it works but you won't see a thumbnail of it and it'll be a pain you'll have to click it and let it load and download and all that so I found the JPEG to be a little bit easier that's why I just do it from the phone because you can actually add an attachment and then take a picture right then and then do it again so hi Louise how's it going we were just doing a really impromptu Trello um, tutorial based on what I learned from Mim, Miriam Felton, Mim is making on, on Twitch um, for someone. Because <laughs> I just use it for my pattern envelopes. I just keep the front and the back. And the closet case patterns I have to photograph this way and this way because they put it sideways. So, you know, you can put as many as you want. I could put pictures of all my garments of me in there so I could go, oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something might jog my memory. And then like Malin said, you can put a link to websites in there. You can put hashtag, which I'm going to go back and start putting like hashtag links so that I can see a bunch of them at a moment rather than going into Instagram and typing it in while I'm trying to talk to someone at the fabric store. So, so yeah. 
So yeah, so we cut out the Upton dress today. We're starting to sew it tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. I hope you guys will join me. And um, I'm probably gonna surge it. So that reminds me, I need to try and set up a camera on my serger. Oh boy, I can do it. I can do it. Um, I know I haven't done that before, but I haven't done that yet. So I figure that'll be good. I only have, weirdly, I only have four spools of red thread. Usually I have like 12 spools of a color of thread, which is also weird, <laughs> but um, I only have four. <laughs> so I may need to, um, I, I can get around this. So, and then this dress has an invisible zipper. We're doing the Upton. Has an invisible zipper. I'm doing the gourd skirt with pockets, V-neck. Size 12. So I hope you guys will come. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. Thanks for coming and seeing me on a Wednesday during, I did, I meant, I meant oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Malin's right. You can add things like, um, you can do the tags of your fabric. You can do, um, you can actually load all your fabric into Trello if you guys want. I'm not going to do that. I go through my fabric too quickly. I'm pretty on top of my fabric stash. Um, I have a few things, but they're so fall-oriented fabrics that I'm waiting. Maybe we're August we'll start sewing some fall clothes because you know me. I like to sew for the season coming up so that it's ready to wear right when the season begins. A knitting trained me to do that. Yeah, so I told them about linking hashtags in there. And then um, you can say, hey, this pattern's only good for knits or whatever. You know, whatever helps you. You can put all, as much as you want in Trello or little. Like, I'm doing the minimum, you guys. Like I said, not an expert. <laughs> I Like I say, I'm trying to reduce my amount of time looking at my phone. That's a classic business owner thing to say. Oh, even adding your fabric to Textilia. That's awesome. Yeah, and Textilia is a really great, you know, it's, they want to be the Ravelry for sewers. So I really like it. Oh, did you guys see Seamwork has added a, um, temporarily they are having a promotion on, I think it's 50% off of, oh gosh, don't quote me on any of this, you guys. Seamwork's running a promotion though. They're going to start making their um, whole thing like a one-time flat fee and you get all patterns, many patterns as you want a month. And um, they're gonna be adding a lot of stuff this year they're hinting at. So if you guys have been kind of waffling about Seamwork, you might check it out. I really like it. Um, the patterns are pretty simple. Um, and you know, I, I really am a fan of the Colette pattern drafting. Seamwork, it takes it more of a, it's a little more simple. Um, but you know, it is nice to have the, the hacks that they offer and stuff like that. And the community, the community is really amazing. People are really supportive and there's a lot of forums on there and stuff like that. You love the flower. Oh, I know, right, Megan? I just wanna eat it up. It's all stitched too. Let's see, where's the edge? That's, I was showing it off. See, it's all, those are all stitches. Yeah, so, um, and this is my tea house dress coming up. <clears throat> All right, so we're sewing the ups in tomorrow. Here we go. What I do with the pattern out there, we go. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow if you make it. I know some of you need to work. Um, I know the time doesn't work for everybody, but um, thanks for coming today, and I will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific. And let's see, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new here and click the little bell and it'll notify you when I'm live just in case you're not sure when that is. Always Thursdays and Saturdays at 11 a.m. Pacific. If I'm not live on a Thursday or Saturday at 11 a.m., you can check on Instagram and see what happened. Sometimes I have technical difficulties, something, sometimes my cat got sick, you know? <laughs> right, exactly, that's how quilt, yeah. Big stitch quilting if you quilt. Oh, this is called big stitch quilting. I signed up for my first class at my lo my local fabric store. You know, I'm gonna be teaching one there, but it's on garment making. And um, I think the class is on um, foundation paper piecing. So yeah, I'm kind of interested in seeing how that goes. Bye, Malin. 
yeah. So, um, all right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you really soon tomorrow. The, the week's going by really quick. Oh, they have a lot of videos on the big stitch. Oh, cool. All right, guys. Awesome manana iguanas. Um, I'll see you guys soon. And I appreciate you being here. Thanks.